Hello everyone, Nilta here again. Greetings from Melbourne, where the weather's very cold. It's winter here now. Um, and where it seems like we have a lockdown every two months. In fact, it's been, I think, it's March to now, it's been the, the 16 month, and we had five lockdowns already. I hope you're doing better if you're somewhere else in the, in the world. Anyway, today I'm doing a review, not review actually, as some demo of this beautiful guitar. All my guitars are beautiful. And I keep saying, don't get sick of me saying we are beautiful, because they are beautiful. Of this beautiful guitar, it's a Shinano SC25. It's a concert guitar. Now, Shinano um, Seijo Shinano used to make uh, great value guitars. Not cheap, just good value. Um, and he made it in four categories. The beginner's one, the entry level, which is starting from number 13. I don't know why he likes to put number three at the end. So number 13, 23, 33, and 43 were entry levels. And then there's 53 and 63, which are intermediate. Then there was the 73 and the 83 were advanced. Um, and I had them all, by the way. And uh, about that, he had the SC, which stands for Shinano Concert. This is a SC25. So um, it's got solid spruce top. Brazilian back and side. And mahogany neck. And it's got an ebonized rosewood fretboard. Okay. The machines were original from the era. Um, what this guitar has is some sign of aging. Like all of us. Don't know why or how, but we can't stop aging. <laughs> and it shows. But the signs don't affect the sound in any way. So there's two major things. The first thing is the the uh, polish is becoming a bit cloudy, just like any old polish become a bit yellowish and cloudy. And at the back here as well, see, it's a bit cloudy, yellowish. Now, what I could have done is I could have stripped it all off and put it, the uh, respray back, put the polish back, either with poly or French polish. But I thought to myself, look, it's uh, an old guitar, let it show its age gracefully. The other thing it's got is, it's got um, this mark here. Now this is a bit, was a um, tough decision for me. It's a small crack here. So when I had to repair, we had to make the decision between aesthetics, for it to look, for it to look good, or for it to be functional. So I thought to myself, look, it's an old guitar, and it's showing a sign of aging anyway. And I don't care how bad it looks or how good it looks. It just I just love the sound of it. So I thought, okay, so I'm gonna I humidify it. So it means I put um, uh, humidity in there, moist in there to open up the thing and close the gap a bit. And then in, uh, and then I put glue on the crack here. I glue it properly. And now the dilemma was that should I hide the crack here and by hiding you would normally sprinkle spruce um, tomwood powder dust in here so it becomes almost like almost invisible but that means that it will be less glue I mean which means it will be less strong so structurally not as good so I thought to myself look don't worry about putting the dust let it show the sign here the crack but at least I'm sure it won't open up again Okay, or it won't affect any part of the guitar. Once I've done that, I thought, that's great, but who knows, you know, I want this to last for a long, long time. So I went back and put a, uh, a brace here, right along the crack here, inside there. So instead of having eight braces, it's got, uh, sorry, seven braces, it's got eight braces. So one here, right? And to compensate for the stiffness, I actually have thinned out the other seven braces to make it more response, um, 
who's going to say in Italian more responsive. Okay, and the result is actually surprising because the guitar now sounds better than it, what it was. So with the extra bracing and the other bracing, we are thinner, so it's much more responsive. <coughs> now, Shinano, I nickname him. Now, this nickname I gave to him. Okay, I nickname him as the Ladies Luthier because all my Shinano guitars were purchased bought by ladies. Except for one, this gentleman bought it for his son. So, except for one, all my Shinano guitars were bought by ladies. And I guess the reason why is because they are is the, is, is the play. So, the contour and neck, um, for some ladies, some reason, ladies love it. They say it's easy to play. The frets are slightly, the frets, fret, yeah, the metal part here, they are slightly thinner, tiny fraction thinner. So, it's easier for ladies with fingernails to press. Um, that's what they told me. And the action, the action here, action is the height from the string to the fret, yeah, it's low. Now, on all my Shinano guitars, I kept the original setup he did, okay? I didn't want to change it because it's him, okay? So here, normally, what I would do is I would put uh, the, the distance from the gap, distance from the string to the fret here, normally I put three millimeters, and across here, on the sixth string, I would do three and a half, right? But Shinano, it goes very, very low, okay? On the first string here, he will set it up to be two millimeters. And on the sixth string here, instead of three and a half, he put down, put down to about three millimeters, sometimes 2.7, which is very low. That's him, and that's why ladies like his guitar so much. Okay, let me see. And because the action is low, it's easier to play. And because it's easier to play, people tend to play sort of more gentle, softer sounds, like a Chopin nocturne, like a lullaby. Okay? Anyway, I'm gonna play something for you so you get an idea um, of how it sounds like. Okay, so let me think. Mm, okay, something like in E minor. Now I should pan up turn. Okay.
Let me try the harmonics again. Still going. Stop. That's how long a sustain is. So, um, it's a nice guitar. Um, I hope I've done just my impro, excuse some of the mistakes, but uh, when I play, I don't think about what's going to happen. Just go and play. And, uh, and oh, I forgot, I forgot, um, I should ask you to put on a pair of headphones so you can rewind, rewind, rewind the video and put a pair of headphones on and listen to the, the tone you can get from this guitar. Um, it's nice and gentle and the solid spruce top helps a lot with those. Oops, kiss the button. The, those harmonics, the rich harmonics. Okay, so it's so cold here, I'm getting cramps in my hands. Okay, so some, um, we're talking about harmonics. Let's play some harmonics. It's like a bell, it's beautiful. the tone variety so you can get really warm sounds on the neck here and as I move my hand across here to the bridge you hear the change in the um, in the EQ talking about recording or in in tone okay here we go so notice how it changes move my hand across So you get a variety of tone moving your right hand from the neck all the way to the bridge, okay? But the beauty of this sensitive guitar is you can do the tone change without moving the hand in one spot. And that's how most of my guitars are very responsive. Um, here we go. So here. Right tone here. Yeah. Here we go. This is bright. Going to warm. Hear it? To bright. To warm. something just before three days ago before the lockdown uh, James a gentleman came to visit me hi James if you're watching greetings to you I uh, hope to see you soon back soon so James came to see me with his prize possession his Spanish modern Spanish guitar because in and he wants to make sure that uh, you know the next guitar he's going to buy is not like a mistake because 
Uh, he told me that in the past 18 months, he's bought three guitars and he wasn't happy with any of them. Uh, all Spanish, all modern. And he said he wants to try Japanese. I said, yeah, come on, bring your guitar. I don't mind. You know, people fly from Brisbane, from Perth, everywhere. Bring the 10,000 guitar here to compare with mine. And they always walk away with my guitar, one of my guitars. So he brought um, his uh, Alhambra number seven, or nine, I can't remember. So he compared it. We, we play it. And then uh, he told me, how come you always play that? I uh, two things to tell you. The first thing is, is uh, the Spanish guitar turned out to be very compressed, very loud, but not much range, dynamic, dynamic range, meaning not too, you can't play too soft because when you play soft, it still sounds loud. And you can't play too loud because it's already loud. <laughs> so there's no variety in dynamics, in the volume, okay? So whatever you play, or I play as well, it was always loud, so it couldn't be expressive, okay? So then he tried it and we play. And what's the now is that because it's so loud, um, the EQ in a bit, the setting, almost, what you can't set the guitar, is the bass was soft. The mid, mid here, was loud. And the treble was soft. So when you play, you hear the, the middle moment actually, the melody, the melody come out, the bass didn't come out much, but you hear all the accompaniment in the middle, you know? Like the band playing with the singer and with the drums. An analogy, okay? So that's what with the Spanish guitar. I don't want to put down Spanish guitar, but that's very made like that, to be loud, like that, booming, okay? Anyway, then, uh, then, uh, then uh, he played uh, James, Hi James, if you watch again, James played and he was very impressed and I could tell from his expression that I asked him, so what do you think? He said, ah, oh, wonderful. So he's going he's gonna to come back. He's going to sell his uh, Spanish guitar and come back for one of the Japanese, one of my Japanese guitars. And the feedback I got from him was that the Japanese guitar, the treble, is nice and bright, like crystal clear, like a bell, eh? and the bass will make a deal. The most important thing is that it's all balanced. So you could hear the bass, you could hear the accompaniment, you could hear the melody. Okay? And he asked me, Neil, how come you always play the song? Um, you know the song? I mean, which one? And he went, this one here. I said, ah, that one. Okay. Because, because the song has got, um, uses the whole guitar range. So it uses the bass uses the treble on the melody, high, really, E to E, one octave, not E, and then an E, so three octaves, yeah? So, first E, second E, first octave, second octave, and third octave, so, yeah, like that. And that's the reason why I play this song. Uh, song, I learned it when I was, when I was 13. And my teacher told me, okay, I'm going to teach you a song called Giochi Proibiti. Okay, this was in Italy about 40 something years ago, long, long time ago. I believe it's from a movie. Um, and uh, in English, it's called, I didn't know what it was called in English, but I only discovered when I came here, they just call it Romance Anonymous. So someone must have composed it. Anyway, Giochi Proibiti. Yeah? And let's see if. This guitar does justice, but I can hear the melody with the accompaniment with the bass. Okay, so nice and gentle. It's not a loud song, it's like a lullaby. Here we go. This is Jockey Proibiti. Oh, romance. <laughs>
Sorry. you enjoy this some demo I hope I have done uh, justice to this guitar beautiful guitar to be played soft and gentle especially at night um, suitable for lullabies for ladies with long fingernails <laughs> or young girls with long fingernails um, and any comment please comment below any question comment below any more questions comment below <laughs> Any more some requests, comment below. Uh, don't forget to please click a like, a thumbs up, subscribe and click the bell. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next demo. Cheers. <laughs>